So I was a bit confused because when they actually released this newsletter about a week ago, they said that this one was going to be under NDA. And then Big Fry goes and talks about it. And I'm sitting here wondering, so is he going to receive a strike or a call or something? Because I was told that the newsletter that was going to get released to the public was going to be different than the one that was currently being shown to supporters. But then they go and release the newsletter and it's the exact same one. <laughs> okay, whatever. What's up, everybody? Do right back at it again with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the brand new newsletter that was just released today because it actually does have quite a bit of information. This newsletter is being made by a brand new community manager named Guinevere. I think that's how you say that. Correct me if I'm wrong. She's someone who's been hosting all of the recent public multiplayer events, but this is the first time that I believe she actually dropped a newsletter for us to view, and there's actually quite a bit of information in this. So let's go ahead and take it from the top. Kept you waiting, huh? What is it with these Metal Gear references? It's been a long time since we've been able to properly release a community newsletter for our supporters. In between working the latest updates and bringing new people on board to help our development, things have been pretty busy here. We've also made a transition from our last community manager, FAQ, rest in peace, followed by an interim period for our new community manager, more on that later, to get back into things, we'd like to answer the community's questions and share some of what we've been working on. A little over a month ago, our interim community manager hosted a question and answer session with our players in an exclusive supporter Discord channel. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I can't really say too much about it, but I will say that I wasn't too happy when I was there, but I mean, I'm glad that they did it, I guess. But anyways, present were their programming lead, game director, art director, a game designer, and one of their 2D artists. This newsletter is an editorialized version of that Q&A and includes several dev answers on common and not so common questions over the course of the evening spent with our passionate supporters. Everything we discussed has been mapped out below so you can stay up to date with the latest from us here at Void. As always, we thank you endlessly for your patience and support with Ready or Not. Our passion project comes to life. I don't know, man. Like, I've been waiting for two years at this point and it's like, you know, it really tears me apart. But continuing on, they have like this little picture that's right here. This is the hotel and my god, this actually looks ridiculously better than what I remembered. I could definitely see the ray tracing in this. Like all the shadows and all the glare that's coming off. That looks pretty good. Wish I could see it in video form or, you know, play it myself, but it's whatever. It does look pretty good. I'm assuming this is going to start talking about the co-op, so let's see what it has to say. What's the status on the PvE? This is a big question. It's an important one, and it's by far the one we get asked the most. Gee, I wonder why. Because of this, I wanted to divide this question into a few different sections that all have to do with the PvE. Why is it taking so long? Simply put, we're creating a lot of elements of the PvE experience from the ground up. We have to build new systems and re-establish existing content and levels based on the past PvE feedback. In addition to this, we've been working our existing narrative designs and fleshing them out for integration into the game as it progresses. Adding new features and working on the AI takes a substantial amount of time with such a small team, which we are currently working on expanding further. When we saw the feedback on our last PvE build, which was back in February? I'm just trying to get this straight. We had a hard choice. Keep updating something that we didn't feel was working or take time to rebuild the system and make content that our supporters deserve. Moving on to the next thing here. What's so special about the AI? Our AI system is a massive undertaking meant to replace the default UE4 AI. We're looking at games that have really strong AI as inspiration and examples we can draw from to create our own AI for the best experience in Ready or Not possible. Our initial AI system wasn't working, and I can't really talk too much about that. It was too basic, and it wasn't going to get where we wanted it to go. We didn't feel like it was what players would enjoy or what they deserve to have. The AI were stuck in basic behavior loops and wouldn't react organically to the world around them. They couldn't respond to situations at hand. Our current system is a huge project, but we think it's what our supporters deserve to have. We're implementing objects into the world that the AI can use, and they determine how and when they want to use these objects. We're still tweaking things internally, but the goal is to make the AI feel smart, immersive, and fun to play against. We want an engaging, unique experience with each level to encourage replayability and variety based on how the player and AI can interact with one another. Everyone should walk away with a different story to tell for each mission. And here's where they have like a bit of a movie here, which we will go through. So this is obviously showing off the map goddamn, but they are making it so that the AI can actually work around all of this stuff. Like all of this stuff that you see right here is what the AI is going to be going through. I'm not sure what any of this stuff actually means, but they end up showing off this stuff right here. They actually kind of explain what all this stuff is here. It's door stack up points, cover generation, and awareness actors will bring life into Ready or Not's new AI system. This AI character has finished up his world activity, whatever that means. And as you can see, the AI is actually moving around. So the AI can't actually see him. The window right here that he's looking through is see-through for him, but the AI can't actually see him on the other side. So he shoots something and you see the AI looking to see what's going on. 
and you can see like the lines that are on the floor. Trace lines and boxes are used for observing AI logic. So you can see the line that's kind of like detached and the AI will bump into like the box that's right there so it doesn't hit the wall, I'm assuming. Once open, AI will use doors to future investigate. So I'm assuming this is to show that the AI is a little smart where he's like, wait a minute, that door wasn't open before. And then I'll come back to investigate, right? Yeah. And then he comes outside to see what's going on that part with the ai where he kind of like turns to his right and then he like flips back around just to shoot back at him yeah that was a little rough right there but the player takes him out so yeah then it continues on to show something else i'm not really sure what the boxes were for what did they say they said the boxes were for trace lines and boxes are used for observing okay so i'm assuming that the boxes are where the ai is looking or where he can see you the red boxes anyway i don't know but it's interesting to say the least yeah because when he like leaned out, he put his head inside of that box and he shot the box basically. So, okay, I kind of get that. All right, moving on to the next thing here. Another element of our AI revamp is the conversation system. We've been writing a ton of dialogue for the AI and working on making them reply to and interact with the player in an authentic way. While it's a long process, the benefit of building these systems from the ground up is that once they have a foundation, we can push them as far as we possibly can with regarding to content. This is something that will help modders in creating custom content going forward as well. wonder how that would help. Most games spend years on AI development and we ended up making a difficult choice to build a new system that would deliver on people's expectations. We've always had a level of ambition for Ready or Not, but we really want to push the boundaries to create something fresh and unique. This means there's a lot of time spent working on our content and scrutinizing it internally. This has taken an investment and resulted in a lot of anxiety from the community, but we know it'll be worth it in the end. Uh, we'll see. Why have Ready or Not's beta and release dates been pushed back? Oh my god how long has it been since they freaking shadow delayed it and now they're talking about it let's see why can't we see any work in progress the meat behind the delay is a culmination of circumstances we don't want to show any of our work in development too early before we have a realized vision that functionally works we won't tolerate handing over broken gameplay to supporters just to fulfill expectations to use an analogy we've got the foundations of the house made we've got the frame up but we're not ready to move anyone in yet the walls the floors the ceilings are still being put in with only two full-time programmers split across elements of the ui ai and gameplay there's a lot for them to tackle to get the pve where it needs to be for our supporters to test it editors note as of this newsletter we've been able to bring a lot more programmers onto the team okay fair enough based on feedback we received we're not making entire levels from scratch everything is accessible from the co-op branch right now is completely revamped and different from what we're working on internally there's been major strides and improvements in many different areas in other words the game feels much better to play we even enjoyed ourselves internally which is a good sign gas has been expanded it's no longer just the station but the surrounding area and nearby buildings port has been completely reconfigured every level has been rebuilt and expanded we made an investment in content that players will love rather than release something that we didn't think you'd be satisfied with and then here they have a picture of the newer fal i believe in the hotel map this is a kitchen that looks kind of different than what i remembered so pretty cool it continues on to say in conclusion this is a process that takes time we understand the anxiety that comes with how long you've waited but we want to make it right right now we see all of the issues with the pve and what we need to work on and fix but we want to get entirely new feedback when we drop pve we want the problems that the players find to be ones that we aren't aware of or ones that we don't know how to tackle it's not a good use of dev time or of your time if we're hearing feedback regarding issues that we're already aware of or working on to make a long story short pve requires many complex fundamental systems that take years to build and we've been tasked to complete that in half the time we want there to be a level of quality established for the players the majority majority of the work is still on PvE, with any major strides made in either PvE or PvP benefiting the other to become better. By comparison, our team working on primarily PvP is smaller than PvE. It's just a big undertaking, and we've never stopped working on it. It just takes a lot of time and effort to get it to the place where you can enjoy it and provide us with fresh feedback to work off of. I just want to let everybody know that this Q&A took place right after I made a video where I felt that the developers did a very shady move and thought Noah would notice. But putting that aside, overall, I thought that the Q&A was pretty good when it came to talking about content and actually showing it off. I thought that part was pretty good. What I didn't like was all of the BS reasons as to why they can't update the build for NDA supporters. Like, we've been sitting here for months waiting for content drops, preferably some that are PvE-focused, but they keep hitting us with the, oh, we're testing things internally, so it's obviously going better on our side. It's like, motherfucker, I'm fucking waiting here to play some PvE shit.
I didn't come here for the fucking PvP, but that was a month ago, so there's no point in ranting over it. I was just really pissed off when they gave us a bunch of reasons as to why they couldn't update the damn build, but it's whatever. Hopefully with the rest of this newsletter, they will actually bring us some more PvE news. So let's continue on. When can we expect the next update? While we can't give an exact time frame, we can say that the next major update for the Alpha will be the return of PvE. We appreciate how incredibly patient the community has been with this wait. Oh yeah. And we're excited to see it in your hands. Hands. In the meantime, we're excited to showcase some of the improvements we've been working on for the game as a whole. And then it shows these two videos here. The first one is Requill Spring. I'm not an expert, but how much recoil does an FAL actually give? Because... One thing that I've noticed about Red Airnaut's weapons is that the recoil has been freaking off the charts on weapons that don't do a whole lot of recoil, like the M4. And I think this FAL actually has... See... Yeah, it actually has a grip right there, so how much recoil does it actually do? I'm just curious. Let's look at the next one here. The next one we got, New Grenade Throw. Is this one where you can hold it? So I'm just curious to know with the grenade, do you just hold it down and he throws it further or how does this work? Okay, so it doesn't exactly tell me here, but one thing that I would like to know about this grenade is if I just decide to press G, does he automatically like pull the pin and throw it? Or like, is that how it works? And if I want to throw it farther, do I hold it and then let it go when he, and so he can chuck it? Like, is that how it works? Cause I think that's how it works in swap four if I'm not mistaken. Cause it doesn't exactly explain here. But I mean, I will say that the grenade throw does look good. Good. But I don't I don't think there was anything really wrong with the last one or at least I don't remember All right. Well, so what's in the next thing here? The next thing says what's it like consulting with law enforcement for ready or not? Yeah, so for those of you that don't know the people that were actually doing this mocap were actually law enforcement At least that's what they said a long time ago. No idea if they're still doing it now But uh, let's see what it says. We have police contacts all over the world ready to go But ultimately most of our focus on consistency will come at a stage where the game feels ready for that level of scrutiny and detail As it stands that sort of focus would get in the way of much of our existing design We want to be at the point that their expertise can be utilized efficiently in Ready or Not's mechanics. We're also aware of quite a lot of supporters with law enforcement ties who have generously offered their experience for the game, and rest assured, the time will come. The exception to the above is animations, where a lot of our focus is on working with existing owners of most of our weapon systems seen in-game so we know how they're really handled when animating, clearing the weapon, reloading efficiently, the best way to use them, etc. What is the command system going to be like? Is yelling at suspect civilians as mechanics still planned and they reply with yes we think it needs a bit more refinement though from a game design perspective we perceive the first action to any law enforcement officer should take us with power of communication and to resolve by non-lethal means before resorting to non-lethal or lethal measures verbal commands are the first step you can give commands to civilians and tell them where to move if there's an armed suspect still at large you don't want to arrest people and leave them in the hallway you want to be able to move them to a safer location if you're not careful enough and don't secure weapons properly then other suspects or even civilians might end up picking them up and then they show another picture of hotel i'm not sure where this area is it's a back room of some kind i can't remember where the spot is though additionally we hope to make voice commands differ based on the situation at hand when your character is moving more slowly you'll speak more quietly when you're engaged in combat you'll be screaming to high heavens one of the stronger elements of swap 4's gameplay that stood out to the test of time was the emergent gameplay of interaction with suspects and civilians hostile that's something that we want to emulate in the game. After playing enough times, you may know the levels where your enemies will generally be, but the interactions with the AI should lead to unique situations that make for a great experience. How do you deal with the feedback on the game's smaller details? We're always paying attention to feedback. Every suggestion, every forum post, every message, we ensure all notes, feedback, and data are organized to report back to the team. Our community manager, hey there, says the community manager, gathers data based on the frequency and type of feedback we're receiving and compiles into a report every month to make sure that everyone at Void is aware of how the player base is feeling. Really? How interesting. Well, we need to focus on for the month ahead. We can't get everything that people want in the game, of course, but we try to gauge what the general feeling is in the community and how to incorporate your suggestions as best we can. Uh, so I actually do believe this because, what was it? I was complaining so much about the VIP mode and how much it sucked that the new um, community manager actually came to me and asked me how they 
could improve it, so I decided to give my own uh, spiel on it. And I have no idea if they're going to take it into account, but hey, I did something, right? Moving on. Will the gun sounds be improved? Yes. We're looking at replacing a lot of the less beefy ones. We want them to feel authentic and retain a sense of realism and honesty. We want them to feel scary. When players resort to lethal measures, they should feel tension, terror, and urgency from the audio to how civilians and suspects react. There needs to be a clear sense of impact. The same goes for when enemies are using guns. There should be an inherent danger and a fear of what could happen to you or your partners behind any doors. And then they have a video here. Let's see. First thing I need to say is that these gun sounds actually kind of rocked my headset, which is not a good thing in my book. I prefer gunshots that don't do that. And it really doesn't sound beefy. It sounds more staticky, to be honest. Maybe it sounds different with somebody who's not wearing headphones. I don't know. I'm looking at the comments and I'm seeing a lot of people who actually like this. I don't know. Maybe my headset's busted. Probably is. Maybe get a new one. Yeah, playing it back, it actually does sound better. So yeah. Continuing on, why does X animation look clunky? And then it replies with, we throw the words work in progress around a lot, but the reason we do is because our creation of the game is iterative. For example, a lot of people mentioned that the cuffs clipping and flexing independent of an arrested player's wrists, it looked bad, we agreed. But that minor issue missed the fact that our arrested state has an entirely unique moveset. You can taunt enemies and praise teammates. We could have just left the hands off screen, but that and many other things should act as an example of the process we're trying to follow when it comes to ready or not. What's up with the anal staircase? And they reply with, I'm afraid that's classified information. Here's another question. What's going on with communications? Is there any new community manager? And there's an editor's note here that says, at the time of hosting the Q&A, we were still in progress of working to bring our community manager on board. The following statement takes place after the Q&A session. And this is the community manager talking directly to the reader. Oh, hey, that'd be me. My name is... Guinevere, I believe that's how you say that. And I'm Void's new community manager. You'll be hearing from me a lot as I got settled in and worked on responding to as much feedback as I possibly can. This newsletter is just the first bit of communication from me. You can look forward to a lot more in the coming weeks. I'm incredibly excited to start working to get to know this community. So overall, not a bad newsletter. They showed up quite a bit here. Mostly the majority of it was PVE, which is always a good thing in my book, but a lot of it was from a Q&A that happened a month ago, I believe. Yeah, a month ago. So the content is a bit dated, but I guess some content is better than no content, right? It's not a bad newsletter. Definitely not. It's definitely better than what I was expecting. Like, I was kind of expecting her to uh, just, like, post a freaking update that FAQ used to post where it's like, okay, we're talking about meth. Look at meth again. Like, the amazing lighting and the, like that's kind of what i was expecting but no this one was definitely better than that but uh yeah that was the newsletter and that's where i'm gonna end the video so what are your guys' thoughts did you guys think that this was a good newsletter um do you think that void interactive should definitely give the supporters uh more things to do than just you know clicking on the multiplayer every now and then or well, i don't know what do you think i didn't think it was that bad i'm just not very fond of how they answered some of these questions but let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like ready or not then be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding the bell you never know you might find something that you like on the channel i cover a lot of tactical games and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye